Hi everyone, my name is Marissa and I would like to welcome you all to episode number three of the World of DVC show. We have a fun day planned for you. We've got our jingle team here. We are gonna talk about the rich history of Disney entertainment and of course, prizes. So join us as we enter the world of DVC. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are now entering the world of DVC, the ultimate DVC destination where magical vacations meet incredible value through exceptional service. Put in your headphones, turn the volume up, sit back, relax, and step into the world of DVC. Oh my gosh. They are so fun. So nice to hear the intro without <laughs> so, Derek trying to sing it, oh, right? Marissa. So Derek, take note. This is how you sing That's right. that song. In the key. In, in the key. In the yes. right key, yes. right? Oh, they are, they are just beautiful. Oh. We're so lucky to have the jingle team here with we, us we as we've named them. them. The jingle team, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know that they appreciate that. I know, but I know. I'm, we'll amazing. come up with something better. Exactly. The, the, world, yeah. the world of DVC theme song the writers. The theme song reader, writers uh, and performers. <laughs> they are just the best. But guys, we have so many amazing things in store for you yes. on this episode. And I know we've kind of hinted towards it every single episode. We keep saying, you're going to meet. The Jingle Team. Yeah. I'm using it. I'm going with it. Go with it. You're Why gonna not? meet the Jingle Team, and <laughs> we do have them in studio today. Mm -hmm. And my goodness, the rich Disney histories and mm -hmm. stories they have. We cannot wait for you to hear them. Um, but before we get started, we do have a little housekeeping that I'd like to cover. Yes. So for those of you who are listening on our podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you like our episodes, give us that five stars or a comment. If you don't like the episodes, you can email Derek. And that's Derek <laughs> at DVCResellMarket.com. Uh -huh. um, if you're He's watching on YouTube. For all feedback. <laughs> all feedback and concerns, send it to Derek. Questions, comments, concerns, or complaints. Yes. Um, if you're watching Watching on YouTube, make sure to give us the thumbs up, hit that subscribe button there. And again, if you've got some feedback or comments, we love to read yeah, through the comments. Definitely. In fact, I've got some comments we're going to read through today. Yes. Uh, but we love your feedback and we appreciate it so much. We thank you so much for watching and tuning in and participating. Mm -hmm. So just a little bit of housekeeping as we go through this episode. Yeah. We've had so much fun too. This is the long-standing tradition of the long World of DVC show, right? As Derek, I think, coined that yes. phrase, the long say This is episode Episode three. I mean, three? we're going to have we're traditions pretty soon. We will. I I think it takes what five times to make a tradition or something like that. We Maybe need to look that times. up. I think so. Yeah. We'll, we'll get Google. that we'll accurate. Go we'll have Derek Google that, <laughs> and we'll report back on that later. But it's so good to be here with you. Nice to see you back. Yeah. Marissa wasn't in the last episode because I kicked Marissa out of the chair because Sue was here. Remember, story time with Sue. Oh. She was here, and Sue and I just hit it off like a house on fire. And so I joined in the conversation, and Marissa so graciously stepped aside. But I'm glad to <laughs> I be like here. You take over. <laughs> it's so fun to be here with you, and um. Yeah, so yeah. because of that, that episode, and my goodness, the yeah. feedback with Sue. We were explaining Sue She's earlier darling, today, right? and Sue is the fairy godmother of DVC. Yeah. And so because of all the feedback and people loving that story time with Sue, in fact, I think we'll make it a hashtag. Hashtag, hashtag story, story time with Sue. That was recommended by some of the viewers it as was. well. They yeah. said you have to do a hashtag with Sue because she's just was such a hit and she scratched the surface with her stories. Oh my goodness. I mean, there's so many things that she could chat about. And, un, you know, I, I kept true 
Marissa, to to the honor of not <laughs> phoning Sue after the last episode yeah, and bothering you. her about her Walt Disney story. Um, we'll wait till the fiftieth. The fiftieth. Tune in for that episode. See how strong I am. I know. I know. <laughs> so we are going to be having story time with Sue every yeah. single episode. So stay tuned to the end of this episode because you'll hear the latest story time with yeah. Sue story. Fantastic. But so many exciting things happening at Disney right now. Oh with July, we are in the month of July mm-hmm. and. Fireworks. Fireworks are, back. Fireworks are back. Did you cry when the announcement came oh out? Oh my goodness. It's I did. It's just mm-hmm. that time. Those We keep talking about what are we looking forward to in the future. And yeah. just that moment of it's just coming back, yeah. those magical moments. So we're super excited. In it's fact, it's a little bit of normalcy, right? right. Coming yeah. back that that's how you end your day. You end your day with Epcot fireworks or Magic Kingdom right. or Fantasmic or whatever it is. You end your day with that special like kiss goodnight from Disney and it's so wonderful and I know we all live sort of close to the magic and it's nice to sort of hear the testing you know booms and this and that in the in the distance um, as we get ready for uh, the return of some of the most magical fireworks you'll ever see and one of the things that I'm looking forward to with that because my son is four and so when they stop the fireworks he was too young to keep him up that late so we never got to really do like the fireworks with him so I Literally can't wait to get him into the parks um, once our passes are out of blackout dates. <laughs> That'll be in August, but I can't wait to get him in the parks and stay till the end. Well, he'll be up a little past his bedtime, mm-hmm. but to watch the fireworks with him, like I'm so looking forward to that. And I know our first episode we talked about things we're looking forward yeah. to, right? Mm-hmm. And one story I have to tell, and I told you guys that the thing I'm looking forward to most is being able to meet the characters again. Because for us and my son, like those are those magical yeah. moments with him in this age. And it's been so hard because it's like a year without Mickey. Um, I it's know. Like I devastating know, right? to even say. But I have to tell you, we hadn't gone to Epcot yet since mm-hmm. all the closures and everything. So I went to Epcot with my family this last month, and Mickey and Minnie stand at the entrance. Well, mm-hmm. we didn't see them there when we came in, and I actually didn't know that they would be there. And so we saw them as we were leaving, and there was like a line of people who were looking at Mickey, but yeah. when you know the characters to a certain level, and you kind of feel like they're family, you kind of know how to communicate with right. them. Right. And so. Mickey and I had started communicating and he love came it. over Non-verbal and him and my son just like had this full conversation Aww. and Mickey was telling him like Caden was asking well why aren't you talking Mickey and Mickey said you know what I've just been writing so much today I just really love writing and so and I'm translating this for Caden right. and like Caden's blowing him kisses and they're Aww. doing like air hugs and I literally started like tears yeah. and my sister goes are you crying <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Mickey in a year yes. but like so I've been looking forward to that hug but I will tell you that moment the cast members did such a Mm -hmm. good job of just the placement of where Mm -hmm. Mickey and Minnie were and those moments so that was a really special special moment again it goes back to that normalcy right of like that's what you expect and then when it goes away and closes but then comes back without that entertainment element there's definitely something missing I know we went to um the Grand Floridian uh this past weekend for my birthday celebration and happy birthday by the way belated (laughs) thank you thank you um it's nice to have a birthday celebration this year because last year everybody did the car drive by or the zoom calls or whatnot so it's nice I think to you know while that was all really special it was even more special to be able to get out and no masks right can walk around it's june july here like it's hot and rainy and so it was so wonderful but i think the excitement of the cast members is what really just made everything so special and so we did a studio over at the grand floridian and it was just so special just to be there it really wasn't that crowded um which i know that we want it to be crowded but personally i don't want to stay there right we want to kind of have a place for ourselves (laughs) selfishly um but we went over to um What's it called in the main lobby? The Enchanted Rose. Yeah. The Enchanted Rose up up in the in the second uh, lobby and had um, an espresso martini Ooh. to die for. Mm. If, have you have y'all ever had the espresso martini? It'll give you a little jolt of yep. some energy as well as a little bit of some something a little tasty in that drink I as love well. Espresso it's with delicious, anything, so. right? You would love the espresso martini. Espresso with a side of alcohol. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's kind of how I ordered it <laughs> too. But it was like a little dessert. It was yep. so delicious. We had that. We had like the most amazing truffle fries, and just such a great experience to be back. Yeah. You know, the pools and just the whole proximity to Magic Kingdom and and, uh, the Polynesian. And so it was just 
it was magical. It was nice to be yep. back around something magical. And uh, to kind of segue into DVC Rental Store for just a second, yeah. if you don't mind. You go. Okay. <laughs> I booked it through the DVC Rental Store, um, which, you know, one of, being the sales and marketing director and brand ambassador for DVC Rental Store, it was my very first reservation with us. Oh, so I felt good. like I was like knocking on the door of my family to say like, hey, can you help me out here? Yeah. And it was so easy to do this. And I know I talk a lot about all of the great deals that are out there for confirmed reservations, um, you know, members renting out their points or renting, you know, guest renting points from members if you're gonna try before you buy or you don't wanna be a committed DVC member, this is a great way to do this. Mm -hmm. And um, what I did is I just went on to dvcrentalstore.com, plugged in my dates, um, found the Grand Floridian, clicked confirmed, I received an email back from our friendly and amazing team, if I can give them a plug for a minute, yep. I love them. <laughs> and um, they were like, okay, Carrie, we're good to go. And so what they do is then they connect with the member who books the reservation, and yep. that was done very seamlessly. Everything was paid. I got a follow-up email from the team, um, I would say probably two or three weeks before saying, we're excited that you're going oh, to Disney, sweet. if there's anything we can help you with. Yep. And then they also were able to link that reservation to my Disney experience. Okay. So when I went on to my Disney experience, to my plans, I actually saw my- They did that for you. They did that oh, for me. Oh, that's Isn't so that nice, yeah. So it was just, it was a wonderful kind of synergistic yep. moment to use this. Because again, I, I've said this in the past few episodes too, I'm newer to right. World of DVC, right? I come from 20 years at, with the Walt Disney Company. So this is all still a little bit new to me, and I'm sure it's new to a lot of, um, of our guests and listeners as well. Yep. Easy, easy peasy to do. So simple. And so, you know, I know as the summer goes on, we still have so many amazing deals for a quick staycation if you're local. Yep. Um, Alani deals are really great as well. Um, Polynesian, there's a lot out there at, at uh, dvcrentalstore.com. I think it's a good point though, like the ease of use, because yeah. a lot of times there's that fear of like, if I go through a different company, right, that's right. not Disney, or if I do this and it's it's DVC, but I'm not a member, so right. how does it work? And there's right. that fear of like, will it be as seamless as Disney does? Yep. And the fact that you can just open up your My Disney experience and have everything there, that's everything awesome. There. It was so easy. And, I, and I've heard from people too, some, some of our guests said, I didn't know who you were. So right. are you are you linked with Disney? Well, no, DVC Rental Store is not affiliated with Disney. We're a third party um, kind of travel company as well. But so many of our, our, our team members, just like DVC Resale, yes. are former cast members. So you've got that Disney training, oh, yeah. that legendary Disney training as well. So it was it was so easy. That's it, was, awesome. yeah, it was really, really fun. So speaking of like seamlessness, mm -hmm. we just recently, as of about month or girl now I think 45 days we mm -hmm. launched our concierge program oh so my gosh, speaking right. of like cast members right, and seamlessness right, right. we have Janan and Rob on our team now and my goodness Love when them. you're buying or selling they are taking over so yeah. they literally that like two days into your sale they're calling and asking how do you want me to communicate with you yes. do you prefer email or text or phone because like for me if I'm like buying something, please mm -hmm. don't ever call me. Like I, I will not talk to you on the phone, mm -hmm. right? But if you text me, I'll respond within right. a second. Right. So it's really cool that we're able to tailor that relationship with our clients to really fit their needs. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of one step above like most sales companies are doing. I would agree. So having them on the team this last month has been amazing. But even the partnership, oh like my we gosh, had yeah. a member the other day who had just bought and she had some excess points she wasn't using. Mm -hmm. So Janan was able to get her hooked up with to you guys mm -hmm. and then you were able to help her rent her yep. points. So it really makes that world of DVC become that yeah. small world. It, it <laughs> does. It takes this uh, kind of this world of the unknown yeah. and really shrinks it. And I know you and I had a had a conversation with the same guest. He was ready to buy something, but the contract he wanted wasn't there. Yep. So he decided to rent points. So he came to me, and as I was just chit chatting with him, and I said, "Oh, I've known Marissa for a long, long time. We used to work together. We were DVC guides together. Oh, you know Marissa?" Yeah. And it just kind of like, yes, yeah, like we're all under that world of DVC, which right. I personally love because coming from Disney, I feel like my whole adult life. Well, it was. It was really my whole adult life was at Disney. And so the culture here yep. is very similar. And I think what's cool in terms of like timing. So a lot of our buyers right now, and I think the thing, one misconception in terms of buying resale mm -hmm. is timeline, right? I want to buy this. I want to use the right. points, but how long does it take? And then we yes. give the, the realistic because we're going to give you the most realistic answer. Right. 60 to 90 days. And that's like, nice. ah! and I want to book at my seven or 11 month window. So the cool thing with our concierge team is they're working to whittle away on that yeah, time frame. Absolutely. So if you are looking to buy, again, keep Keep that in mind if you're booking for next year or 50th anniversary. Keep that in mind in terms of your timeline. However, the good news is our team has lots of different avenues, whether it's helping you rent points for that mm -hmm. reservation or getting it closed sooner or getting you hooked up with financing. Right. 
with Monero right now, they adjusted their rates, so they are actually, for DVC financing, they have the lowest rate option, which is awesome. They have no credit check, but our concierge team can get you plugged in with that. So mm -hmm. if you want to kind of play around with numbers, they'll do all of that yeah. for you. But I think kind of the biggest takeaway in terms of like housekeeping and what mm -hmm. we want to talk about in world of DVC is if you are looking to sell, right? So. Mm -hmm. Normally, if you go on our website, dvcresellemarket.com, you're going to see about 400 listings available. Right now, we are happy to keep 100 available. Right. So, and it's not that we right. don't have stuff coming in. They're coming in and selling the same day. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to sell, and I think one of the things people don't realize is the value of what things are selling for. Right. I mean, Saratoga is averaging 120 to 130 a point. If we talk about six to 12 months ago, that was $99 right. a point. Exactly. So to see like a 30% yes. increase... If you are saying, hey, you know what, we're not going to Disney as much or mm -hmm. things have changed, reach out to mm -hmm. our team. Again, dvcresellemarket.com. Check out and see what you're on our broker opinion tool. Right. You can see what your contract's worth. Doesn't mean you have to sell it. But if it's mm -hmm. something where you're finding, hey, we're not using it as much, really great opportunity for there that. There really is. And, it's, and it is a seller's market right now. Yeah. So if you're thinking of buying, you know, I say this to myself all the time, to add something on. Right. You know, that add-on itis that we always <laughs> talk about is to add on because prices are just going to keep going up. That's As it. I know so many of our of our listeners and viewers are probably shaking their head going, yep. I know, I wish I would have done this sooner and yep. bought more. And you know, Well, and Disney yep. had recently did a price increase. Yes. And they recently did a change to the number minimum number the of minimum points. minimum number of points. Is now 150 to get the perk. Yeah. So as you see, Disney big. getting healthier, yeah. Obviously, co what comes with that is price increases. Yeah. So I think you're very right with that. It's true, and we have not a price increase, but some something that kind of sounds like price, but it's prize. So I want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so complete gear. That was right a now. really was great that, transition. Was that a bad segue, that or was that awesome, a good Carrie. segue? <laughs> but I want to get off kind of the pricing and yes. all this, all this stuff because we have such a fun show. Um, as we said at the beginning, we're like right? giddy about. We this are show. so excited about it. But I want to show. Um, the prize because yes. every you know our long-standing tradition yes of having As prizes <laughs> our long standing episode tradition, three long episode three tradition. our long-standing tradition um is is our prize so yes. i'll hold it up and yeah. you describe it okay so this is this is it so for this episode i mean this may not be a big deal right now and then you're gonna finish the end of the episode and be like how do i get one of these yes you will so trust this me this is the chart music of our theme song world of dvc theme song and actually all the creators who are in studio today yep. um my lovingly jingle team <laughs> the phrased, jingle team. they have signed this yep. um hand signed original copies that we will be giving out to all of our prize winners of this episode now you might be wondering how do i get one um yeah. Pay attention because you're going to really want one when we finish yeah. the show. This is going to be the easiest giveaway you've ever participated in. Right. It's All true. I need you to do <laughs> is jump onto YouTube and give us a thumbs up and a comment. Mm -hmm. Hopefully a good comment. A nice if it's a comment. bad comment, email Derek. <laughs> right. We said that at the um, beginning, right? Or yep. if you are on any of the podcasts and yeah. you're listening, maybe Apple Podcasts, Give us a five-star rating mm -hmm. and then give us a comment. And once you've done that, send us an email. Many of you know our email. It's info at worldofdvc.com. Right. I'll say it again. Info at worldofdvc.com. That's in the show notes. Just let us know your name, mm -hmm. your address, and we will be sending this over to you when the show airs. Yeah. And we want to make sure that everybody who wants one of these mm -hmm. can get one. So the more who participate, the yeah. merrier, because it really is. I mean, in our hearts, this is a piece of Disney history. Yeah, I think so, so too. It's something to cherish. And yeah, you're going to want to. I keep thinking, like, to place it behind, you know, on a bookshelf yep. or to frame it, to put it in a scrapbook or something. Yes. This kind of is that piece that you'll pull out, I feel like, in a few years and go, oh, my gosh, remember the jingle tea? Yeah. You know, like, it will, it will be something. Thing that we will all be singing we sing this song every day as it is yes. we try to, to have Derek not sing it as much but but we do right it's we in our heads it. it's in our heads but um this is just and then to have the signatures yeah. and you know these the 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 team that that created this masterpiece um we keep saying that you know them right you don't may not know that you right. know them but you do know them well and that's like whether you're walking down yeah. main street or mm -hmm. you're in American Pavilion mm -hmm. you they're part of your family. They are part. You just may not realize yeah. how knitted into their family yeah. they are. And I think we've talked about entertainment, right? Yeah. And just what was so cool, and we'll we'll go to this clip of Carrie and I in studio because so we fun. got to do a listening day where we actually heard this yeah. song. I, I hate to even call it a jingle because it's a song. It's it a full-on song. Um, we heard it for the first time, and this was like at the peak of the pandemic when everything was shut down, right? right. Like entertainment had been on pause, right? And so. 
as for especially Carrie and I, we're like yeah. we go to the parks for the entertainment, right. and so like that was such a void in our heart. So to go into the studio and hear Disney magic and Disney being created, magic being created, we were in tears. So let's tune just, in. Yeah, let's play let, the video. Let's play the video. <laughs> we'll show you what we're yeah, talking we'll share, about. We'll share our moment with you. With a spark alive in our hearts, a chance to build your legacy. To go to magical places with smiling faces and value and trust you can see. When it's buying or selling, renting or lending, there's a wonderful dwelling with wishes unending. You'll save a I know for me, like, I think sunscreen, you know, mm-hmm. like a little bit of sunburn because I guess I'm pale, but you know, <laughs> and, 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 and that melting Mickey Mouse ice cream bar, and you just don't care because you're at Disney and you're yeah. so happy to be at Disney, mm-hmm. and, and that's that's what it's all about. Oh. Choreography, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were doing this with yes. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh my god. So, so yeah. um, yeah, what, your initial thoughts? Oh, uh, uh, it's alright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so um, magical. Like every part of it, like there's just so many little magical levels about it. Yeah. And like yeah. we were saying before, when we had initially just heard a little bit of your vocals, we were we were, we were sold. Right? And so now, when you add like the little oh. magical parts to it, it's yeah. Like, oh. yeah. Talk a little bit about because there's there's a little there's a little piece at the end. So when we when we approached this project from the very beginning, we didn't come at it from the standpoint of we're going to do a theme song or a jingle. We wanted to create it the same way that we would create and produce an, an actual parade or a show at the park. And so that's how Sarah approached the writing. It's how I approached the orchestration and the production and the way we sang it and, and tracked it. So I kind of, it, it, you know, it's a, about a minute long. And so we kind of start sounding like we're, you know, we're seeing maybe the Magic Kingdom morning show or something right. like that. And then by the end, when we get to that tag and it takes a turn and it's just orchestration, I wanted it to feel um, a little bit more akin to uh, Walt's Wonderful World of mm-hmm. Color, Wonderful World of Disney, yeah. where I, I bring in a, a little bit of uh, vinyl noise mm-hmm. at the end. And I actually tracked some of the samples to tape to get that oh, authentic cool. kind of, of texture. So uh, at the very end, when you hear the you know the piano run mm-hmm. and you hear the little Tinkerbell enchantment, I wanted it to have that same texture that you would get when Walt comes mm-hmm. on the screen. Mm-hmm. So it feels a little bit yeah. more vintage, and there's just that there's something about that mm-hmm. to me that just feels so like welcome home. It's right. just special. so true right. to the heart it's of the brand. Yes. My task, of course, was to come with what you had presented in our Zoom and talking mm-hmm. and everything and take those kind of keywords, um, key branding elements that we want to have that are representing specifically your brand and your company. And how do we incorporate that into the song and make it still feel magical and still feel mm-hmm. that it's hearkening to this kind of nostalgic classic sound. Mm-hmm. So that's where we kind of yeah. just worked together to hopefully well, you did you know, it. Yeah, you make that it. happen. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I knew quickly, I'm, we were talking on the Zoom just about some different things, and, and he kept someone kept saying, "Enter the world," 
we were enter the world DVC. I was like, that's it. I knew it immediately. <laughs> that was the Eureka moment. I was like, that's that is the song title, and I'm gonna let that kind of go from there. Mm-hmm. So and it really, yeah, it was so fun. It's so such an honor to just get to do this. Wow. And Sarah has been has been recording uh, jingles and themes, and you know, so many, so many other people's music for so long. And she said um, that uh, I'll, I'll I'll steal the words from you, but she said that. Um, it kind of sunk in the, the the lyrics and the music that everybody else has been putting in front of her um, sunk in where she's put in her 10,000 hours yeah. in places like this yeah. right. and everybody going, here's what, here's what we want. Here's what we want. Right. And so it, it, it's not, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't difficult for her to sit down and go. It was fun. I know how to do this. I know how to do this. Oh my gosh. It brings that whole day back. <laughs> like chills. It? I know. Yeah. Oh you know, goodness. do you remember too, when we went in, um, you know, we, we had all of our, our greetings, but it was still the pandemic. So yeah. as you saw, we all had masks on and we all kind of like greeted each other across the room, like with a bow and a curtsy. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody could hug and, you know, like we wanted to. And But I do remember as they were getting Sarah set up in the studio and Rick pulled us aside and, and you'll meet them in just a minute. But he said, Carrie, stand right here and Marissa, stand right here, because this is like the sweet spot to hear everything. Like you will feel like you are just immersed on Main Street USA and we're standing there and I don't want to look at Marissa and she doesn't want to look at me because I think we're both going to cry <laughs> and like coming down like, don't face. cry in front of you know but it was just magical so it's now time it's now the, the time has you've come. all been waiting for yes so please and please welcome the jingle team Rob Sarah and Rick is that the official name are we going with the that? Jingle we, can, we, can, yeah. we can change that. I think that's something better. Oh, thank you all so much for yes. being here. Oh. Thank you so this much for having exciting. us. And you two are just fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Just talk a little bit about how entertained we are. <laughs> thank you. My goodness, they, they did everything that you just heard and saw. They did it all in one take. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Thank you. So we cool. have fun. We definitely have fun working we like together. To talk. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we're, we're, we're chatters, definitely. <laughs> Oh my gosh, but this has been a day that we have been looking forward to having all three of you. And this all started, you know, back at the beginning of the year. But I want to take, I want to give you guys a moment to kind of introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about each of you. So Rob, can I start it off with you? Sure. All right. Sure. Yeah. So uh, how far back do you want to go? As far back as you want to take us. We have all day. All day. <laughs> yeah, so so I, live in, I live, obviously, I, I live in Central Florida now. I live in Windermere, Florida. Um, but I grew up in Ohio mm-hmm. and I knew that I wanted to be in show business in some way, shape or form. Uh, and Ohio had a lot of great opportunities, but <laughs> at the same time, I knew I kind of needed to expand sure. the pond that I was in. And so, uh, a friend of mine said, Hey, they're having auditions down in Orlando. And so I, I went to a, an audition. I came to an audition down here and, uh, and it, uh, I booked the gig and I actually started out. It was, it was October of 2000. Uh, when I first started at Walt Disney World, and I, I was hired as a puppeteer, so I was working on shows. Some some of your viewers and listeners are going to remember these shows. I was on. Uh, uh, I started at Legend of the Lion King. <gasps> Over yes. where, where oh, Mickey's still our magic, yeah. Yeah. Oh still our magic is now. Not mm-hmm. Festival of the Lion King. It's right. right. Yep. Legend of the Lion King. And uh, uh, Pocahontas and her forest friends yes. over there. But when when Festival of the Lion King was in Camp Mini Mickey, yeah. down the way was was uh, Pocahontas wow. and her forest friends. And I was working on that show. And Bear in the Big Blue House live on stage. Yeah. And Voyage of the Little Mermaid. And I, <laughs> These were the shows and the things that I was working on and getting to do. And I was on the opening cast of Playhouse Disney live on stage. Oh, that would become uh, Disney Junior live on stage. Yeah. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, I was getting together with some guys on uh, Mondays or Tuesday nights, and we were just getting together and singing like like rockapella, acapella, um, barbershop harmonies mm-hmm. and stuff together. And uh, we, we were like, well, we should, we should, we sound okay. We didn't. <laughs> we, said, uh, we, said, we said we said we should we should go to an audition, and they were Hong Kong Disneyland was about to open. And they were holding auditions for the Dapper Dans over there. Wow. And so, but long story short, we were like, we don't think we're going to get it, but let's go to the audition anyway, just to get our foot in the door of auditioning and just mm-hmm. be on the radar. Sure. And uh, so we went to the audition and we got about a song and a half in and the casting director waved his hands. And I thought for sure, it was like, thank you. That's all we need <laughs> on your way. But instead he goes, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Um, the group that's in Tokyo right now, I'm going to send them to Hong Kong to be the Dapper Dance. I'm going to send you guys to Tokyo. <gasps> it's a 13-month contract. All of you need to say yes or none of you can go. Oh, my oh. 
God. So you all auditioned in a group together. We did. That's oh, yeah. crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so I ended up, uh, we, we all looked at each other like, uh, uh. And like, <laughs> he goes, well, well, I'll give you the weekend to think about it. And so we chatted with this. A great you didn't opportunity. harmonize the word yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. But so I ended up going, being able to go in, over and be in Tokyo, oh, oh, sing at Tokyo Disney Sea special. as part of the Dockside Porters over there. Oh um, and I came back, and my friend who had actually hired me as a puppeteer, um, he was he was he said I'm I'm looking for people to help teach puppetry. And so would you want to do that? And so I started working on shows like Finding Nemo the Musical mm-hmm. as what is called a puppet specialist. Right. So I went on to the production side. Yeah. Started working on that, on those shows, plus some of the other shows that I've been performing in, working on those. Well, I, I actually, uh, because I was um, uh, around for the rehearsals and I was familiar with the shows, I would step in for performers mm-hmm. when they were missing. And I would kind of play their role as needed. And I didn't have any nerves about it. I wasn't, you know, just because I already had the job. Right. Um, right. And so I, I wasn't nervous about stepping in and performing. But the director and the creative team kind of pulled me aside at one point. They're like, is this something you would want to do more regularly? Would you want to <laughs> get back into performing? And I said, uh, sure, yeah, that'd be great. And so I started working on uh, the Hoop Did You Review. I got a call to go in and audition for that and uh, got to got to learn that show and work on that show. And uh, who did you review? And uh, the Dapper Dance of Main Street USA. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I got to step on stage as Marlon in Finding Nemo the right. Musical. Right. Um, and uh, a number of other shows and, and things that I, I got to do all along the way. So that's kind of gets us up to where we are now. Wow. Um, and I, I actually, I should say, because within all of that, that's my career, but yes. within all of right. that, um, I had a, a talent crush that got out of control. I went, oh. I went to see um, the Voices of Liberty over at Epcot. I've been a longtime fan. Mm-hmm. And somebody told me, they said, Rob, there's this new soprano. You need to go. You need to hear this new soprano. I like how it was phrased as like a soprano. Right? 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 <laughs> Not like this cute girl. There's yeah, this new soprano. soprano. <laughs> hear this new soprano. And what they knew is like, like I, am, I, am incredibly, <laughs> I am incredibly attracted to talent. And, uh, and so uh, they, said, they knew how to kind of get my attention. They said, you need to go hear this new soprano. So I did. And sure enough, oh my goodness, I, I thought I need to know her better. Oh, and uh, we, so um, her name is Kate. Mm-hmm. And Kate and I, uh, we found each other. It took a little bit of time, but we found yeah. each other and uh, fell in love. And oh. We got married. Uh, and she still sings with Voices of Liberty. Mm-hmm. Um, all of that to say that I got introduced to all of her world and all of her friends of people. Mm-hmm. And that is where and how I met Sarah Whittemore. Oh my God. And so, yeah. Such so a small it, world, yeah, right? Uh, I had yeah. to. Yeah, <laughs> I had to. That's how I met Sarah. So, t- Sarah, you tell yeah. your, your history, your story. <laughs> well, hi, everyone. Hey. <laughs> I'm so happy that we're all together. This, I've yes. been looking forward to this day. For so long, oh. um, I'm just so happy to be here. So yes, yeah, so I'm I'm a proud cast member of. It's going to be 15 years in the fall. I can't believe that. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah and I'm originally from North Carolina, and kind of like Rob, I just on a hope and a prayer was like, I'm going to go for it and see if they like me. <laughs> in 2006, and luckily it all worked out. And my now husband Scott um, and I moved down uh, 15 years ago. And we're here, and, and I'm so thankful to still be able to say I'm a cast member. So mm-hmm. very thankful for that, and my such an honor. So, mm-hmm. so Rob and I are great friends, and we've always had um, just a creative um, chemistry, always, you know, and wanted to work together, but we've never really worked together an like, in this capacity. <laughs> yeah, so this good. was the moment, mm-hmm. and Rob reached out to me, um, knowing that I, you know, am, am a musician in Central Florida and um, do a lot of studio vocals and things like that. Um, and, and said, hey, I have this project, and I feel like you are the person for this project. Can we do this? And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, it was kind of that feeling of like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I think the answer is yes. Not reading, you know what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> We're a confusing bunch, too. I mean, so I like, am. if you give our title, people are like, yeah. you do what? Yeah. <laughs> we weren't sure what we were doing either back yeah. then, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Singing, you've been singing other people's jingles, other, you know, jingles and right. names mm-hmm. for so many years. Right. You, you had a, you, 
you were just around it so much you had a knack for it so that's why well thanks yeah 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 i've definitely absorbed that over the years and it's it's that's my happy place is being in the studio of course mm. performing at Walt Disney World too but um and so we kind of we had a zoom meeting initially and pieced right. everything together and right. talk about concepts mm -hmm. and and now here we are with a finished product mm -hmm. and it was just such an exciting process and such a creative um you know, journey and, and just really wonderful time for me to dive in and have this challenge of incorporating keywords mm -hmm. and, and really um, specific things that you wanted right. in this and making it, you know, come to fruition and be something that's special mm -hmm. for you, for your vision, mm -hmm. for the company. But also I think for us too, I mean, it was a really special process. So um, I called, I, I called her up and I said, Hey, you know, here's what's funny is that if you spend any amount of time with Sarah, uh, if you sit next to Sarah, if you're walking down the street with Sarah, as we do, <laughs> if she sees a, if she sees the name of a company, if she sees a tagline, if she sees a logo, she's ready with the jingle. <laughs> we didn't know that. <laughs> and so that was my initial thought to oh call her. And I said, hey, listen, I have this project. Let's, would you want to do this? But, and you said yes. And I said, okay, who do you want to work with? Yes. You're going to do, you're going to do words and music. Yep. But, who do you want to work with for everything else? Yes, and I, I there was one person and one person <laughs> shining and resounding in my brain, and I knew I have got to call Mr. Rick McKee. <laughs> and here he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi everybody. Hi. Thank you for having for having us. It's great to sit down together. Um, so I'm Rick McKee. Um, I I work uh, very kind of invisibly in this <laughs> mm -hmm. in the music industry in general, but um, in the themed entertainment world, um, I've I've been composing and orchestrating and producing music for about for twenty years, and really for the last sixteen years. I, so much of what I uh, work on is music for themed entertainment. So that's uh, music for roller coasters and rides and show, these special shows, parades, fireworks, really these kind of event, mm -hmm. you know, uh, things that need music. And I, it's something I, it's a niche that I, I fell in love with when I was a kid. And growing up in Oklahoma, I just, we came to Disney all the time, and we would see the shows and the parades, and I just fell in love. I thought this is incredible orchestral, beautiful music that uses you know the orchestra and great singing, and I just thought this is the the coolest thing. And that's since I was nine, that's what I wanted to do, and I am you know so thankful to to do so uh, to have done a lot of that mm -hmm. in my in my career, and that's how. So we met. I, yeah, Sarah and I have been, uh, well, we were kind of instant friends when I think. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we would, uh, When we met. We met at Voices of Liberty, Liberty yeah. in the Rotunda yep. years ago. Mm -hmm. And became just kind of quick acquaintance friends. Yeah, like, hey, was, you're cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you're yeah, will you're you be right. my friend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should hang out. We should work together. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. and then and so we, we've spent quite a few years, you know, well, a lot of the times I was writing shows or whatnot, and Sarah was, you know, in the booth making it sound amazing. And, you know, you've heard her voice oh, gosh. a lot, beautiful. you know, in yeah. all sorts of venues. So, and, right. And we just, uh, yeah, it was just a, it was a, it was a, a beautiful friendship, yes. music yeah. and uh Absolutely. Yeah. It's interesting yeah. to become friends as adults, isn't it? Because right. as kids, oh. you kind of get thrown together by your parents or school or an activity. But to, to be adults and be like, and you get to pick your friends. Hey, I kind of <laughs> like you. I like you too. Let's yeah. be friends. Right. You know, like it's it's such a strange kind of moment when you do. You kind of meet your tribe. Oh, and yeah. and I met Rob. Um, we were sitting in a meeting and saying that we want to create a jingle. And somebody said, "Who who do we know?" And I said. <laughs> and I don't know that he knows me, but I know him. <laughs> and um, I have just been a fan of Rob for a long time. And But I auditioned for Rob. Do you remember that? A little bit. A yeah. little bit. I auditioned for Rob with Central Florida Community Arts. I was auditioning to be a narrator in the show. And they were doing their own version of Candlelight. And I never could 
be in the candlelight choir, the cast choir, um, because of my schedule. So I thought, what better way to insert myself in candlelight than to, you know, be a narrator for this amazing community pro- project that was going on. And so that's how I first met Rob and, and um, you cast me. So thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Yes. Thank yes. And you. So, yes. And thank so you. it's people like you make the casting job easy. Well, it, thank you. And <laughs> we just had such a great experience. But then I knew, you know, oh, I knew he's a Dapper Dan and I would pop into hoop de doo every now and then I'd say, oh, here's Rob, I, you know, I know him, he doesn't know me. And then somehow we connected <laughs> on social media, long story short. And I, I just, I think I texted you on, on Facebook and was like, do you up for uh, a little project? And kind of like Marissa said, like, we're a confusing bunch, right? You know, well, we're gonna, like to Derek's yeah. point. So Derek goes, <laughs> anybody who can put buying, selling, right. renting, lending, and make it magical. Make I mean, it magical. So, and I do have to pause for a second yeah. because we gave you guys, uh, we filmed what we thought could be a good jingle. Oh my gosh, And we filmed so it. And I, can't, I gotta find it. I'll see if I can find it because yeah. it's Derek singing. And, it's, and it goes like, Buying or selling no, or maybe, maybe even financing. financing. Or so he was like trying to do a take on. You can on, do it all at, at the, the World, World of DVC. He was trying to do a take on Hoop de Doo. Like, yes. like, like me slapping kind of yeah. country bear. This is all we gave you guys to work with. And, and then we get this beautiful right? theme song. Chris and I are like, it's not bad. You're right. right. I mean, it's not a man. And then after the, the, first demo, like the first demo back from Sarah and we're like, Oh, <laughs> oh, thank God. No, I'm not staring. Thank God we found her. Like, it was just, it from where we started, it's like those memes, like, you know, where you started and how it's going. Yeah. Like, that is, you know, where yeah. we started to how it's going now with, you know, the world of DVC is yeah. just incredible. So we partnered, and, and again, it's kind of that, you know, I think good people know great people. And Rob yeah. said, I have the perfect person. And then Sarah said, I have the perfect person. And we all Zoomed. And I remember Sarah sitting on the Zoom call. And I thought, I wonder what she thinks of us. And she's like, <laughs> what I, I have to rhyme with with dwelling? She's like, <laughs> what, do you, what rhymes with selling? <laughs> dwelling? <laughs> and, she, and you did it. Well, I had a notepad. And honestly, just like a quick little antidote from that, you know, it, that Zoom call was so helpful because not only, That's you know, good. was it a chance to meet you all and just mm-hmm. face to face. I mean, I know it was virtual, but just to kind of get to know your personalities and what your goals were. And then, you know, as I was kind of writing some things down, I just remember, I'll, I'll never forget the moment, you said, enter the world of DVC. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's it. That's it. I knew. Oh. And it was almost that feeling of like, I really want to go. You know, but it, I, that was Stop truly talking. was a spark. Oh. That, and, 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 you know, the jingle starts with, it starts with a spark. And I was yeah. like, that is where it started was that. And so that start. kind of helped me in the rest of the process. And so. it was also such this like moment in time where the stars align. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, we are all impacted cast members sitting oh. here, myself included. Well, I came to work with the world of DVC and with Nick and Marissa and Derek and, and DVC rental store, but everybody was impacted. And this was that time when everybody was either was like a or laid off, right? It was a, it was a pause. And that's when we all worked together. Mm-hmm. And I remember then when we went to the listening um, party, if you will, and, and it was like, I, I got called back. I'm back at Disney. We were like, oh, thank God. Like, we just, <laughs> yeah. we, you can't hug, but we want to hug and yeah. cry with you. But we, but we drove home together, Marissa and I, and we, we said, how grateful are we to have had that little sliver of a moment yeah. where schedules aligned and it just all, and it gave all of us this creative boost. I think that we all need it in, in this moment. Right. So thank you. Yeah, all. it was a little ray of light. And it was, what, a, was a, a very, like, you didn't know where things were going to end up no. or what was going to happen, but that was such a, a project, even for us, because we'll do a lot of like technical work throughout the day, but that was so fun to kind of step away and just have it be yeah. just like this artistic yeah yes. so artistic oasis. right artistic yeah. oasis, and i yeah. think too just even a lot of people i and i don't think realize and you can hear the song and know like people hear the song and they're like that's disney yeah, like, yeah. like without oh, saying yeah. disney that's disney and i think you could go online right and find somebody to write a jingle you could go and look and somebody could write you a couple liners right. and give you some music behind and that's that and i think what makes and this is why we really wanted to do this episode is just the background because this wasn't just like a Here's your jingle. This was like thought out and magical. And I know we talked about like the nuances a little bit during our recording, but even like the the when you wish upon a star. Can you touch on that part at all? Yeah, what I was I was thinking when you were telling that story. I one of my first memories after we'd had the first call where we were talking about how this was going to go and Sarah had started writing. I remember I was coming back from the store or something, and Sarah had texted me 
a voice memo. And it was, I think it was a sing through of half of the song and then it had the, and, and you sang the tagline, the enter the world at the very end. And I remember in that memo, you sang that buying or selling what a wonderful dwelling. And we heard that all together. And I thought, oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> That's going to be great. Uh, <laughs> and it is. So, yeah. Yeah. It was. Uh, so, yeah, it was fun, you know, for, for me as the arranger producer to, to get to hide some, you know, as many Disney nuggets in there as I could. You did, and, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just enough notes that it was legal. Yes. Right. So, and uh, do you ha do you know off the top? Because I know, like, there's a like an uh, nod to Sorcerer Mickey. There's a nod yes, to When You Wish Upon a Star. A, yeah, there's a, there's a nod to, to uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice. That's it, yes. yes. Right, right. And When You Wish Upon a Star. Think of what else is hidden. You had mentioned too, Rick, that it kind of goes from like Main Street USA right. welcome into like the wonderful world of color. Right. Like right. it kind of, you know, progresses mm -hmm. into this. We did we definitely we wanted it to start, you know, sonically, we wanted you to feel like you were right there yeah. on Main Street. And so, you know, it was treating that orchestration very much like a good morning show or walking down Main Street. But then at that ending when it, you know, becomes very lush. Uh, you know, the strings kind of come in and, and mm -hmm. hold there and Sarah sings that beautiful uh, vocal line at the end. If you listen really carefully at the end of the recording, when the when I, when I put a lot, the big fast piano run right after that, you can hear the old, uh, you can hear like a vinyl, like a record crackle, yeah. crackle at the end because we wanted it to, uh, so we wanted the arrangement sonically to feel like it was hearkening back to Walt Disney, right. you know, doing his segments on mm -hmm. the wonderful world of, of Disney mm -hmm. and uh, that sense of nostalgia. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Which is, and we had given you like I think a tiny nugget of that, but we didn't go into detail. Yeah, we did, and it was funny because I got to, and you'll see like our office in the intro video that we do of the show, and I got to design the office, and I oh. wanted it to be very throwback to like. 1970s mm -hmm. Walt Disney, and so even to have those things mixed in, mm -hmm. just tied with our whole because. World of DVC, it's a new creation, right? It's a new brand of our collaboration. Right. So you're trying to find the pulse of like, where does that lie? But even like our sign, like it has right. kind of that retro feel. Mm -hmm. So I think it's so special that a one-liner in our meeting, you're able to take that and then <laughs> run vinyl through and make it like, yeah, that's it amazing. Really customize it. it with, right, with literally just that one yeah. that one meeting. I, I should have said too, when we first started to like, if, you, if you're listening in your car, if you're listening, watching on YouTube, like, Go grab your kids right. because I feel like for the little nine-year-old, right, mm -hmm. sitting in Oklahoma oh, yeah. Yeah. or the kids in, in you know, where, North Carolina or Ohio or wherever you're from, like this, the, this is this is the group that like I feel like the entertaining kids, the Broadway kids, the theater kids, like they would be like, tell me more, tell right. me everything, yes. right? So if you haven't grabbed your kids, hit pause and then rewind and then go back to meet meet them. Along those lines, because Sarah talked about sending, or you, you talked about Sarah sending you just a voice memo, mm -hmm. yeah. and it was just solo. Here's here's what I'm thinking, and this yeah. is rough, and I'm, we're just getting started on this. And what is fascinating to me about the whole process is it's just a matter of starting. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter yeah. of beginning. And yes, let's have the meetings, but uh, you know, I think Walt Disney has a, I will paraphrase it, but um, you know, there comes a point when you stop talking and you start doing. Start yeah. doing, right, yeah. right. And let's, we've had enough meetings, we've had enough conversations, yeah. we've had enough talking, yeah. let's start doing. And mm -hmm. Sarah was ready. Yeah. We, had, we had the meeting, we had the talking, and Sarah goes, I'm, I'm ready, and she's, she just started. And, uh, and that's the creative process, right. is mm -hmm. just starting. And, once, and going back and putting a new layer to it and adding another layer to that. And to the young listeners, the young viewers, um, I, I, yeah, it is just a matter of just starting, right? right. Beginning that, that I said I, I grew up in Ohio, Oklahoma, uh, North, South, Carolina. North Carolina, and you know we knew like we wanted to mm -hmm. do other things, do more things, and it's a matter of going to the place where it's happening yeah. and just jumping and in and starting. It, yeah. That's so such great advice yeah. too. Yeah. And I, I've been asked, and we I think we all know the answer to this question, but how many voices? are singing in that song. Yeah, so it's just me. Um, right. I'm on the solo lead line. Um, and then I also have um, the female background vocals that were beautifully arranged by Rick. Mm -hmm. And then Rick is singing the male vocal right. background. So mm -hmm. I think yeah, people, so I've, I've had a few yeah. people say, 
where, where was the choir? Where, where, where did they? Yeah. I did. You know, where did you record this? Right. And I said, well, there was one, yeah. and and I think maybe two, and that's it. Like it right. wasn't this mass choir. It was. Sarah. And you know, that's yeah. that's how it's done for the. You know, behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of times it is a you know big choir, but mm -hmm. for so many shows, and I'm not just talking about you know Disney theme. All sorts of theme parks and shows and commercial music. It's just a couple people, yeah. and you know, and that being Sarah, so many times, you know, she'll sing her, you know, sing her parts and then record, uh, record it again as a, you know, changing her voice a little mm -hmm. bit. I don't mean to talk no, for you, thank you. Yeah, it's okay. It's <laughs> better than me. It's uh, <laughs> like an arranging music nerd. You know, I am inspired by s session singers, which is such a unique. A talent within being a singer because you can bring a great Broadway vocalist into the studio, put them in front of a microphone, and they just can't, you know, deliver the goods. Mm -hmm. And so the you know, somebody like Sarah who's had so much experience uh, and uh, who can stand in front of a microphone and know exactly how her voice mm -hmm. sounds when it's recorded and just nail it, you know, on that first time, put it right there and mm -hmm. you know stack her voice. It is just that. That inspires me to want to create. That's how I got started in anyway, was being inspired to work with talent like this mm -hmm. <laughs> who could do that thing. Right. So. I was there for, for the some of the recording sessions and it was fascinating of I just I just sit back and let these two work. And it was fascinating to me the minuscule level of detail that they were getting into. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah would hear it and be like, Oh, you know what? I feel like I'm just a little bit sharp on that word. <laughs> and it was like eighth note of a word that went by is you know, I'm just a little bit sharp and you'd be like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna go back in and we'll fix it or we'll re-record you know but just that that mm. detail pointillism um, yes yeah. yes yeah. um to your point earlier about kind of pulling the curtain back and that it's more often one or two voices mm -hmm. providing the choir sound. I remember years ago being so impressed with the unison sound of Disney singers. Of how, <laughs> how, 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 how all those voices to sing so well together. Yes. Right? <laughs> what? And then I found out it's well, it's it's helpful when it's just one voice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's layer over yes. top. Yeah. That, they get along really well. <laughs> they get along really well. Yes. <laughs> and I think I don't think most people realize no. that. I, I didn't that, realize a lot of yeah, that, even mm -hmm. coming from entertainment yeah, background yeah. I don't come from a lot of the vocal side of it so right. it's fascinating yeah. but I think even our first episode we kind of ended with like mm -hmm. where the name tag will take you right and some of yeah. us are former cast members and some of you guys are current cast members but I think that's the cool thing is you never know yeah. what doors will open and mm -hmm. even for people looking from the outside in you never know what bouquet of talent each mm -hmm. cast member holds yes. and that's what's so special it's kind of going and saying what else can you do <laughs> where where else can you stretch yourself and what can you create from this and we've got to see that with some of our team members mm -hmm. and just to see like that with you guys in kind of that pause moment where it was like all right you can help us and it right. turned into this just really beautiful theme song that we yeah. have we love it. We love it. Thank you guys oh, for being oh, here. Such, such but we rough. can't we can't wrap up. No. We just yet. Because we, we have, have a long standing tradition. tradition. <laughs> that was Disney Unison. Oh man. Yes. Yes. Right. Let's Let's <laughs> yes, of a game okay. called This, this or, or that. that. Gotta be this or that. How do we how do we get them to do that at oh every jingle? They're never Show. leaving. The You're never leaving. That's right. You 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 are now officially right. Oh, brilliant. Okay, yes. back so to the studio. okay. <laughs> Come back again. I love um, it. Okay, this so this or that. Yeah. So this, this or, or that. that. Have you all ever played this or that? I'm I'm uh, I'm familiar. All right. I'm, I'm nervous because I yeah. I, I feel like. I just, I always want to talk more about yes. why I'm choosing the this or that. You and I are but speaking I the same language because yeah. I don't like this game. I'm not good at, like, just <laughs> throw when But if you want to know more. Winner, oh, mm. then I will feed on your fear. No <laughs> 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 no winners. But if you want to know more, let's say somebody answers it this or that, and you're curious, why did they choose that answer? Put it in the comments. No. And oh, maybe we'll reply. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Derek didn't give me that rain last time, but that's okay. I'm going to start okay. including that. Yes, I think that's good. Executive we, order. Talking, we're talkers, right? We're talkers. Yes. So to just have a one-word answer, it's, oh, I have to it's explain tough. myself. Okay, so. this is rapid fire. All right. we'll Are you ready? You, Rob. Yeah, Rob, I'm going to start with five. you. Here we go. Okay, Rob. Beauty and the Beast or Frozen Live? Beauty and the Beast. 
Illuminations or Epcot Forever? Epcot Forever. <laughs> oh, that might be a comment question. <laughs> That's why I paused because you might want to comment about that and ask why. Port Orleans Riverside or Port Orleans French Quarter? Oh, uh, who has Yeehaw Bob? I don't know who you have. Oh, yes, I do. Um, Riverside. That's, that's it. Yeehaw, yeah, Bob. That's it. That's, He's yeah. so great, isn't He's, he? He is so great. I know. Yeah. I'm not supposed to be talking. I, you guys are breaking the game. <laughs> <laughs> we are really bad at this, you and I. Okay, good. Uh, Grand Floridian lobby pianist or Grand Floridian live orchestra? Live orchestra. Very, very good. You're off the hook now. All right. Wow. Sarah, you're in the hot seat. Is that hard, right? Oh. Look, hey, Sarah, easy. you are up. Oh. But okay. I love the live pianist. I know. See, you have to I right? the, you can't I throw love shade to them, too. Okay, okay, okay. It's a terrible okay. game. Cue the, cue the, cue the jingle again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Sarah, for you, World Showcase with Character Cavalcade or World Showcase with Tapestry of Nations? I'm going to say World Showcase with Tapestry of Nations. Remember Tapestry of Nations? Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. Carrie! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> <laughs> Would Sweet. you rather never eat a Mickey ice cream bar or a Mickey pretzel again? I would rather never eat a Mickey pretzel. Okay. Okay. Right. On Halloween right. sleepover in Haunted... Wait. Huh? Mm-hmm. On oh. Halloween sleepover night, is that a thing? Am well, I on Halloween, it <laughs> there should be a, there should be punctual. I think Derek did this. Derek wrote so, these. Yeah, I'm so gonna play on, him. on Halloween, <laughs> on, on Halloween, Halloween sleepover. Okay. All right. On Halloween. <laughs> okay, yeah. on Halloween sleep overnight in the haunted mansion or Tower of Terror. Oh, Tower of Terror. Okay. <laughs> oh, Tower of Terror. Okay, ride Mission Space five times in a row. Or It's a Small World, five times in a row. It's a Small World. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> Grand Floridian Spa or Saratoga Springs Spa? Grand Floridian. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Good all job. Right. Good job. <laughs> We're all talking too much, so it's a, <laughs> this is a bad crowd to play. So are you ready, my friend? I am. Okay. Okay. I feel like you'll stay true to the rules, unlike all of us. <laughs> Okay. But, but you're reading them. So. Oh, that's right. So no, that's very right true. Marissa throwing shade. <laughs> She's not wrong, though. Okay. Brave the crowds on New Year's Eve or Fourth of July? New Year's Eve. Only ever stay in Epcot Resort area or only ever stay at Magic Kingdom Resort area? Epcot Resort area. Oh, this is a good one. Are you one. ready for this next one? <laughs> oh, man. I don't know that you are. <laughs> Voices of Liberty? Or Dapper Dance. Oh. This is so unfair. <laughs> it's not even- oh. <laughs> oh. I would choose this game. Oh, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. Very She's good. The right. Okay. Yes, as the mm-hmm. soprano. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very good answer. These are tough, right? <laughs> Mickey's not so scary or Halloween Horror Nights. Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> really? Yeah. Not Boobash? We'll talk later. Yeah. Down- <laughs> Take it off. Here. Downtown okay. Disney or Disney Springs? Oh, Disney Springs. Disney okay, Springs. so really quick. Next episode, we are going to do an East Coast versus West Coast yeah. Disney edition. Yeah. So just I would like to pull our audience since we've got a oh, really nice great. audience here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just by show of hands. So we'll start with East Coast. Oh, oh no. Oh, come on. <laughs> One is the happiest and one is the most magical. Oh, no. It's a this or that. Oh. East Coast on the count of three. Oh. One, two, three. East Coast, raise your hand. I have to say. Oh, are we playing too? You are playing Oh, too. I'm playing. Okay, East okay. Coast. East Coast. Okay. okay. Uh, but and, Disneyland, I love you. And West yeah. Coast? Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, I love it over there. I think if I didn't. I'm sorry. It's the sand. I think if I, if I did not work at, at World and yes. it was not so much yeah. a part of my Makes history sense. and part of, you know. I, the that. energy of Disneyland, yeah, it's true. I didn't understand. Yeah. I didn't understand when people said, oh, it has a different personality, mm-hmm. a different energy. I didn't understand how that could possibly be until you get there mm-hmm. and you step onto Main Street at Disneyland and you go, I get it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And this is why this or that is such a hard game yeah. because you have to explain mm-hmm. right. yeah. why you're throwing shade so, to the other one. We will explain. <laughs> Our episode number four will be the big rival of East yeah, Coast East versus West Coast. West Coast. And not He's versus. So I mean, yeah. both have beautiful things. But tune right. in to see what we bring up for that episode. Right. It's going to be so much fun. And then just yeah. finishing off, one of the things that we love to do here is just talk about the future, right? And yeah. with so much changing 
over the year and just kind of things coming back, right? That excitement. We wanted to ask you guys just really quickly, kind of what is the thing that you are most mm. looking forward to in this coming year with Disney? With Disney? Yeah. Oh, gosh. I mean, definitely seeing the fireworks come back because it's, you know, I don't mean to step on everybody's answer, but it's so <laughs> symbolic of what we do coming back. Yeah. You know? And so. Yes, quite literally. Yeah, it really is. literally. It, it, you, it, you shoot off fireworks when... Uh, uh, um, Jimmy Fallon, a, a number yeah. of, of nights ago, uh, they did a, a Broadway's coming back scene. Oh, oh, yes, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. At Great. the very end of it, mm -hmm. he, they shot off confetti. Yes. And the story that he told later was, because on the video you can see him go, confetti means something. Aww. Confetti means something. <sighs> And uh, he told the story later that they said, if we don't get the shot, we're not going to shoot the confetti. When we shoot the confetti, you'll know that we got the shot. Oh, wow. And so it, it hung over a little long and the confetti shot over and he was like, confetti means something. Uh -huh. But he told the story later going, it means so much. It doesn't just mean that we got the shot. Mm -hmm. Confetti means Broadway is back. Mm -hmm. Entertainment is coming back. Yeah. Live performance, in person is coming back. And I think fireworks at the parks it means we're something. Start we up. are, yeah. right? <laughs> Do we need <laughs> confetti? Yeah, yeah, it is. And, yeah, you know, I think just just mm -hmm. to you know, spin off of what they've said, it's yeah. entertainment. Walt Disney is an entertainment company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to to for my hope, and and I think we are seeing more and more of that is just to have more of our live entertainment continue to come back in the parks, and I think that's something that our, the guests really really seek out. You know, the attractions are one part of that awesome Disney experience obviously the resorts and hotels um but the entertainment is that other really important piece right. of the pie the and heartbeat. we're getting there and we have some offerings but i think the more we can keep getting that out it's just going to help everything blossom mm, and get I back agree. to yeah the waltz waltz original you know <laughs> right. mm -hmm. dreams and visions yeah. for the right you know, the parks so uh selfishly just getting in front of audiences again. Yes, yes. you know of course. um ta talking with other performers um Getting getting laughs from an audience, mm -hmm. getting applause from an audience, knowing that you have said something, sang something, mm -hmm. danced something, did something right. that got a response from an audience. That is, for lack of better terms, it's a drug. And it is addictive. So true. Mm -hmm. And it is so, it's a high. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, when, when I'm performing at, uh, at the Hoop Dee Doo Review, we come down off stage about 10.30 p.m. And I don't come down mm -hmm. from the high of yeah. doing that show until about 1 or 2 in the morning. And there is just such an energy that comes from that. And so many performers just had to quit that cold turkey. Oh, yeah. I know. And right. we thought we would be back within right. a couple of weeks. We thought right. we'd be back right. within a couple of months. And it just, it hadn't come back. Well, we are seeing signs that it is coming back. And so when I say selfishly, we are... If you're excited to see entertainment again, yeah. we on stage, on the other side of the curtain, on the other side of the proscenium, we are so excited to see you yes. again yeah. and do this thing. For it's you like the somewhere. soundtrack. Like Entertainment is like the soundtrack of all of our Disney experiences. Right. And we have gone to Epcot, I think in February, January or so. And Epcot's beautiful, whether it rains, is sunny, is 100 degrees or 50 degrees. Like It's yeah. just always, to me, it's always so beautiful. Yes. But there was no entertainment. Mm around and it you could just feel that it was it was kind of a representation of where the world was we were all right. trying to get back and disney was doing the same thing of opening and and people were there guests were there and but it just wasn't the same to walk into you know the american adventure and look over to the left and the stage is empty and go into you know the 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 uh, american adventure attraction and there's no voices of liberty and it was just like and I was with somebody who had never been to Epcot before. And I was like, okay, now picture it if you will, right? <laughs> this is really what it is. Because yeah. she was like, no, it's cute. I'm like, no, no, it's not cute. It's better than you can even imagine. <laughs> so it's like the, the entertainment, our entertainment partners and friends, you all are just the soundtrack yeah. to, to our experiences at Disney. And now, you right. know, the soundtrack to us. And that's it. Here. It's the heartbeat, yeah. right? And it so is. we thank you guys for yeah, making the heartbeat you. of our mm -hmm. company, right? Like your song is the heartbeat of our show, of our company. Yeah. And now that you guys have watched and tuned in, yeah. we are certain <laughs> everyone is going to want one of these. Yes. Um, so again, if you would love that signed copy of this beautiful song that our friends wrote, make sure you're leaving us a comment, five-star review. And again, that email info at worldofdvc.com mm -hmm. let us know your name and your mailing address right. and the more we can give these out the better what a really great memory for all of you to have in your homes and your hearts as we celebrate the next year of disney mm -hmm. oh 
And did you hear that? I did. <laughs> did she not turn her phone off again? Or is, does that mean it's story time with Sue? <laughs> Hi everybody, story time with Sue. Why don't you gather around so I can tell you one of my stories. I'd like to talk about a special time being a cast member. It was year of a million dreams. And it was great fun for guests because the guests were chosen at random to experience different things or to get different gifts like this hat. And the nice thing about working for Disney is we were also chosen for certain things. And I had the opportunity of touring the Cinderella suite, the castle suite, with the Imagineer who dreamed it up. <laughs> it, was, it was just for somebody who's a Disney file in the first place to be chosen for that and to be able to go see it firsthand, it was unbelievable, the chills I had being able to go up there. But no pictures, and I'm sorry about that. They confiscated our cameras and our cell phones. We just had to go up and experience it. So when you first walk over to the castle and you're walking in, there's a door on the right-hand side, and our Imagineer gave it three knocks, three special knocks, and it opened up, and one of the guides was there and let us in to the Cossier Lounge. It was an area with a desk and... A uh, clock in back of the concierge desk, and it was not quite midnight, and it was stopped there. Have any idea why? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> it's because midnight never happened. So this way, the magic just continues and continues and continues. Along with that, in the uh, up in the ceiling, there were little mice up there and little bits and pieces of the Cinderella story. So you just felt Cinderella when you walked in. Then we went up into the elevator. In the elevator, you walked inside and you felt like you were in Cinderella's coach. It was all velvet, gold velvet, and it was tufted. And you just felt like you were sitting in her coach. And on the floor was her crest in a mosaic, which was beautiful. When it stopped at the floor and the doors opened up, the hallway was just, I mean, I had goosebumps, guys. It was amazing because you walked out and there's this curio cabinet lit up. And the first thing you see is her glass slipper on the pillow. I mean, it was the actual glass slipper for Cinderella. And oh my gosh, I was just, I just wanted to take that home with me. And below it was her crown and it sparkled so pretty with a scepter. And then below that, some of her pumpkin collection, which as we all know, was very important to Cinderella for her coach. So we walked into the bedroom and here I am standing in the castle suite. I mean, my gosh, it, it's a castle. And it's a suite, and there's Cinderella's gold crest above the beds. And there are two beds, sleep six people, by the way. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six. We could go. And uh, they had the two beds, po four poster beds. And in front of the beds were chests. And we were allowed to open up the chest. And I opened it up, and there were these plush robes with the Cinderella crest on them and slippers to match. The Imagineer had said that whoever was going to be staying in the castle suite would be allowed to put the robes and slippers on. And after the park had closed late at night, they were allowed to come downstairs in front of the castle and have their pictures taken in the Cinderella robes and slippers. Unbelievable. And so we looked at that and above the fireplace was this beautiful picture of Cinderella. And all of a sudden, it turned on to Channel 9 News. It was a television set behind this beautiful portrait of Cinderella. They had just blended it right in. And the fireplace itself was so magical. There were the embers that came in the fireplace shot up into the fireworks like they were over the castle. So the whole room was just filled with magic and filled with little bits and pieces of Cinderella. When you walked around the corner, there was a den, and the den had a beautiful sofa that I found out pulled out into a bed for two people, and the windows, the stained glass windows all around that room told the story of Cinderella. 
So you had her dad's cottage. You had the invitation to go to the, the ball. Then you had the, uh, the glass slipper. And it just continued with the mice, the two mice. And it was just the story of Cinderella shining through, through the light of the stained glass. Um, just beautiful. But the best part was the bathroom. I'm not usually one who likes to stock bathrooms, but this one was <laughs> definitely one to stock. When you went into the bathroom, there was the big tub, and all around it was the mosaics of Cinderella's story. But what was really nice is when you turn the lights off and you hit a switch, the stars above you started to twinkle, and the watercolor changed. And it was just so peaceful and so beautiful. And it was, it, it was just something to see. So um, I tried to hide out in there, and uh, they did find me. <laughs> I tried to get the slippers, and they found those too. <laughs> so I really didn't come back with much other than with my lovely ears for, your, for the um, Million Dreams and Live Your Dream. And that's my story of the Cinderella Castle. Not quite like what you found out on the West Coast with the Walt Disney Suite. Uh, Walt Disney Suite is in New Orleans Square, and it's not quite a castle, but if you ever get a chance to go out there, the best room in that whole suite is the children's room with the train, Main Street train that goes around and around up on the ceiling, and it's just beautiful. So. Good night, sleep tight, and sweet dreams. May they be yours. She's so awesome. This is why we created Storytime with Sue. <laughs> Love her. She's so great. Yeah. And she'll be back on every episode um, with another story yep. to tell, right? Yeah. And so, again, if you want to reach out to us, the easiest way for that right. quick message, info at worldofdvc.com. Mm -hmm. Again, after you've left us that review and the comment, come on over and we'll get you one of these fabulous prizes. Again, anything negative, just email Derek, he'll take care of it. <laughs> and so if you are looking to buy or sell Disney Vacation Club, that is dvcresellmarket.com. If you're looking to finance your DVC purchase, Monera has the lowest rates when it comes to credit check and of course the fabulous option that no one else has. Uh, there are no credit check options, right. so that is monerafinancial.com. They're, they're great over at Monera. And then for um, DVC Rental Store, if you are looking to rent out your points as a member or rent points through the DVC Rental Store, if you're wanting to sort of try before you buy, dvcrentalstore.com, we'd be happy to help you. All right. Well, I think we have one, one more, more thing, thing to say. To Come on over, exactly. guys. But we're going to invite our, our awesome, talented <laughs> We have a long standing team coming. Our long standing <laughs> tradition. All right, ready? And that is? We'll, we'll see, see you real soon. soon. Bye, Bye, everybody. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Please remove your headphones, step back into reality, have a magical day, and we'll see you real soon. Enter the